taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knott's County. As always, if you enjoyed the series, drop a like on the video, that'd be most lovely. I thought we'd just start off by jumping straight in. We've had a youth intake. I think it's better than last year, and to be fair, we were expecting it to be better than last year. We were promised an attacking midfielder, and I believe, was it fullback or centre-back? It can't have been a centre-back, because I actually don't see any at all. Someone has stolen our centre-back. Um, actually, I don't think that's what it was. I actually can't remember what it said. And I should maybe make a note of that next time so I can see how they compare. But we were definitely promised a midfielder, uh, an attacking midfielder. And that guy is this guy. This is Tom Tozer, the guy that came through. I checked. He is from Leicester. Professional personality. Reasonable potential of four stars. Uh, determination of 11. He's got a decent first touch. The thing is, like, we'd have to retrain him to play back here. Uh, which I can obviously start doing once we've given him a contract and all that. But the issue I've got with him, really, is that he would be a playmaker, probably, but he's got six passing, and his vision is only seven. So he's not amazing from the very off there. Uh, where he really excels is he's got good corners, good first touch, and good free kick tech, and he's really a dead ball specialist, a very aggressive one at that with a little bit of flair, too, so he can juggle while he sides you down. But all in all, that's really the best. It's definitely better than last year. So Tom Tozer is here. And in addition to that, Paterne Cabasele, which is a cool name. And more important than that, uh, where is he? Here we go. Aliko um, Arvaladze. We got a Georgian in our youth intake, which is bloody awesome. I do love that there's more regen um, are coming with slightly different nationalities in the youth intakes. And that, that's a really nice little feature. So shame is crap. And speaking of regens... It's time for Regen Sunday. Let's go. If you want to participate in Regen Sunday, head over to the Discord. There is a link in the description to the video. And uh, yeah, drop your Regens into the Regen chat and I will be sure to pick some out. Got a reasonable bunch this uh, this week. Uh, I've, yeah, you know my type. First up, Claudino Robalo, a Guinea Basso uh, right winger who plays... Well, I presume he came through Porto because they always generate these guys. In fact, yes, yes, he did. What about this? 20 crossing. Of course, he plays for PSG. Amazingly, only 71 caps, actually, for Guinea Basso. But that is that's still something. Then we've got Victor Cherny, who plays for Sheriff Tiraspol, so I'm guessing he's Moldovan. What a great player that is. That's probably one of the best Moldovan players I've seen for a while. Eight caps for the age of 19. I'm sure he'll get 100+. plus. Then we've got Valmir Kori, uh, a Kosovan centre-back. Seeing quite a few Kosovan players, actually. Weird one for you. When I was scouting some of the uh, Welsh youth intakes, one of the Welsh, Welsh clubs, I think it might have been, it was either Afan Lidl or it might have actually been Blanau Fastiniog, had a Kosovan player there too. And there's also a Lithuanian guy that plays for one of the big Irish sides. I've been looking at him, but he's worth like four hundred thousand pounds or that's how much their asking price would be so we can't get him but yeah he's really quite a decent left back uh, and he's a lithuanian so that's kind of cool I wonder what this guy's favorite soap is then we have brian kazito a ugandan left winger who's come through at uh, Arbe over in denmark this is a good way of getting ugandan regions is to scout Arbe because they have a like, i think they've got some link with an african club same way that midland did um and that's how you get good ugandan regions then we've got mihail <sighs> Ah, the surname. He's firstly, he's Turkmenistani. I'm going to try and pronounce this surname. There's an awful lot of extra stuff in this one. So I'm just going to use everything I've learned over the years. Is it Chernyakeyev? Chernyakeyev? I, I don't really know. It's a tough one. But yeah, a Turkmenistani player. I can't really go wrong with that. Then Philip Pearson. Lovely English striker. 16 finishing. Really nice. Played for Dulwich Hamlet too, which is always a nice feat. Then we've got Christian Hassan. A Chad from Chad. I mean, you can't go wrong there too. Then Josh Zanatta, a Canadian centre-back, and he actually looks pretty decent playing for Hearts, which is pretty damn cool. He's on trial with him, in fact. And lastly, finish things off with Jeff, or I guess, Heth. Uh, yeah, the, the Heth, we shall call him. So yeah, there's your regens. Uh, enjoy those. If you've got any more, drop them in the regen chat, and I'll be sure to get on those too. So... Today and tomorrow, big episodes. Tomorrow is going to be four live comms in a row as we finish off the season. Today, we've got a pair of live comms. There's so many live comms. Live comms for days. We've had two games off camera. Let's get into those. So first up, we went away to Crawley Town, and this could have easily been another banana skin for us. We weren't amazing on the live, but Sam Hughes was excellent. Um, he really, really was. One of the best players on the pitch, as with Matt O'Reilly as well. But Crawley, they beat us early this year. They inflicted our first defeat. And they were I thought they were going to hold us initially. But Matt O'Reilly came up, come up with a 90th minute winner for us. I think it was Regan Booty, in fact, that whipped the ball in. Yes, he was. He came off the bench, whipped a great ball in. And O'Reilly wins the header, makes it 1-0 in the 90th minute. That was a massive goal. Because then that allowed us to climb back really well into the right direction with a 2-0 victory at home against Tranmere. Two early goals in this one. Tweezy and Dehaney with the goals. We could have had plenty more going for, further forward. As you can see, Regan Booty was once again absolutely phenomenal in this match. I think he actually won Man of the Match, did he? No, oh, no, of course. Oliver Shen uh, formerly of, I think he was on our Wimbledon save, somehow won man of the match for a team that lost 2-0 and only had one shot on target. What? And that actually leaves the league looking like this. Cambridge United threw away uh, a late point that they were going to get, so they should be on level points with us. But we now have a slight bigger gap 
because for some reason, they just keep taking points off of each other at the moment. So we're in a really solid position. And a win today against Morecambe would really start to instill in us the fact that we're in a good spot. We're basically, I mean, we're guaranteed to get playoffs, aren't we, at this rate? Uh, I think it's unlikely any of the others are going to drop away from that. But honestly, who else is going to be joining us in these positions? It's going to be at anybody's guess. We're still only five points clear with six games to go. With the way this could go, anything could happen. We lose one game and this could all go out the window. This is going to be difficult, and unfortunately, even more difficult by the fact that McPhee is on international duty with the under-19s, I think. So, a, a very unfit Curtis Jones is going to have to come in there, and also possibly Pierce Bird. I, I trust him over Ben Turner at this point, particularly as he scored a couple of goals for us. Everybody else, though, I'm okay with. So on the bench, Slocum, Brindley, Declan Dunn, Bars, McCrory, Mitch Rosen, Ray, uh, Ramey Campbell. It's a shame having to drop now on McPhee, because he's actually been doing some decent stuff lately. We've been on a good run for a little while, so I do expect, well, three games in a row, so I do expect that we're going to find some little blips somewhere in these like, final six matches. It's inevitable. Also, our scouts reckon Regan Booty would be considered a good player for the championship. He's now rated four and a half stars in this team. Um, he's had in, having one hell of a season. He had a bit of a slow start, but he's really picked up. In addition to that, we actually won our under-19s league, as you'd expect, and we're still unbeaten, and we might go the full season unbeaten, which would be amazing. Duhaney, I'd like to see Cambridge go up if we were to go up too. Oh, and it's in! It's Curtis Jones! His fifth goal of the year, eight minutes on the clock, and that's, well... I mean, I wasn't actually expecting that. I figured it was just going to be easily clear, but we've got the lead again against Morecambe. This is a very good little run we're on, and the other teams are just dropping points at the right time for us. O'Reilly gets it back. Dehaney whips one across. I just figured this was going to go nowhere. Curtis Jones gets in a great position, and it's a lovely little volley in the near post. Fair play to him. He's taken his chance back in the team. Also, when it comes to things like streaming, uh, someone asked me about the VODs. I will make the VODs available, but I'm going to try and set it up so that I can upload them to YouTube as well. But I need to find a way so that I can isolate uh, the audio track so I can remove the copyrighted audio and place some like uh, like stock music on those. Because I want to be able to play good music on stream, but I also want to upload them to YouTube afterwards. So if anyone knows a good way of doing that that's quite easy, then do let me know. Um, one nil up so far. Pretty tight game. Currently, Alanga, got to be careful here. This is not a different, not an easy situation. Flicked over the bar. It's fine. And Hughes, again, just he's been an absolute revelation this year. He's not exactly best pleased with me because I'm playing him technically out of position. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Baldwin? Oh, easy stuff at Enzio Baldwin. 13th goal of the season. Remember how many goals he had? He got like 10 goals in like the first 16, 17 games of the season. And he's kind of got off the boil a little bit in the second half of the year. Um, By the way, second assist of the night for D'Amico Duhaney. I want to try and sign him on a permanent if we can do. And I actually talked about it in the press. And the Huddersfield manager said that there was a potential for us to do a deal there, as did Scott Parker about O'Reilly. So there's a good chance we might be able to sign both Duhaney and O'Reilly on permanent deals. And Duhaney, I would really like to bring in. He has improved leaps and bounds this year. The amount of assists he's got, I think that might be up to 12 for the season now. He's given Booty a run for his money. Mendes is in here, and it could be an immediate equaliser but it's not as a Conquer gets across. Booty to deliver one of the back post and Sam Hughes is in there. It's a great stop. It's been such a close race this year. I don't want it to fall away at the I want it to be exciting in all honesty. Tweezy's already through. Oh good save from Tut. Tweezy picks it up amazingly. Booty's through and a good save by Huffer. Richardson. Tut. Back post. Oh very good goal. I mean it's a lovely ball and Anthony Alango's got one back for Morecambe just as we were starting to impose ourselves on this game. Morecambe have grabbed themselves a goal back and I can't really fault them for that. We didn't get out to them quick enough. Eventually the ball's come out to Tut and this is an absolutely wonderful cross. He's completely taken out our defence with one ball. It's a very tight angle and Alango's done very well to put that in. Maybe Oconco could have done better but still. And he's gone past one. Finds Baldwin. Oh saved. Clint. Oh my. Hang on. What the hell happened there? What is going on here? <laughs> how did we not score a goal there? Oh my god. Well, I don't know how we didn't score in that scramble before half time. Booty missed an open goal basket, and I think Too Easy did as well. We need to keep going here. A longer again. Gotta watch out. This guy can dribble. Oh, well played. O'Reilly, get that ball up the pitch. Can he find Too Easy? Does. Can I sip it through if somebody finds Booty? There we go. Notts County 3, Morecambe 1. I was just saying about how Regan Booty had only scored one goal this season, which is a lot less than he should have, really. And he's popped up with the third goal. This is really nice work, actually. I didn't expect Too Easy to actually wait for the run, but it's really nice work. And is there a back heel? Oh, just around the side, and Booty's rolled it into the back of the net. And it's a captain's goal for the club hero. Lovely job. Over the top, and Ulembo's in. Going to need a conquer to make a big stop here. And he has just about, just completely bombarding them here, Brandon Fleming. Jones, booty again, booty again, O'Reilly hits the crossbar, too easy on the rebound, eyes oh, offside, Walembo, and oh, it's in, and Scunthorpe has scored a late goal as well, how, how is this 3-2, Notts County 3, Morecambe 2, a direct free kick has gone in, oh, Conquo, oh, you, oh, buddy, buddy, old pal, and there we go, Notts County 3, Morecambe 2,
Don't ask me how that ended up being 3-2. Morecambe definitely created a couple of chances, but how is a game like that going to be so close? Crazy. Blandon Fleming had a really poor performance. Point is we got the victory in the end, and Dehaney gets another pair of assists. Right, moving on. Next game. Six points is the gap, not eight. Right then, we're back. Away at Newport County today. A lot of games going on elsewhere. Quinton Fortune managing Newport County, which is pretty damn cool. By the way, Ron Coates broke his foot. I was just told to move him up into the first team squad because he's a one to watch. And then he goes and breaks his bloody foot in an under-23 uh, under game. Annoying, because uh, he seems to have mad potential. So, can McPhee come back in or is he still away? I'm going to bring him back in. I prefer him to not to, to Curtis Jones. And it's good because he's our player. I mean, Dara O'Shea should also be around. Yep, okay, cool. Basically full strength, which is what we need right now. On the bench, Slocum, McCrory, Bars, Campbell, Brindley, Saunders, who is that youngster we showed you earlier, and Curtis Jones. Oh, wow, look at this for a system. Okay, this is a very interesting. I call this the, I don't know, the, I have no idea. Name that system. They've got Regista in League 2. They also have Vashon Nerfil, so we've got to give them that at least. I have no idea how this is going to go, but we, we need to keep going because there's those three massive matches coming up next episode that could decide everything. Like, there's so much on the line. We really need to go and win this one to give ourselves the best shot in that final few matches because we've got to play Bolton, we've got to play Cambridge, and we've got to play uh, one of the other teams up there whose name I can't remember. But we need to make sure that we're in a good position before that, really. And Booty heads it over the crossbar. We're in a good position now, but it could all change. We all know full well how much one defeat can change things and rock the boat. So if we were to lose get that defeat today against Newport County, that could really cause problems in those big games against bigger sides. Obviously, it'd be nice to win the league, given that we're currently top of it, but I would happily settle for a promotion spot at this point. But you never know, maybe the lads will power through the final part of the season and someone's losing, and I think it's Scunthorpe, which is quite nice, because they're one of the teams right on the cusp here. O'Reilly, Booty, got to get that ball out wide for Niall McPhee. Can he dig something out for someone? He might. Not quite, but Baldwin could. And he's flicked it down for too easy. Lovely stuff indeed. Newport nil. Newt, Newt, Newt's County one. And that could be one of the goals that potentially sends us up. Uh, could be so important for us later down the line. McPhee, nice work from him. Just dropping this ball across. I thought O'Reilly was actually going to get a header straight. But this is a lovely little flick header from Baldwin. And full on the volley from too easy. Lovely work. 26 goals this year. Can't argue with that. He might have missed a load of one-on-ones, but he still scored plenty. Flicked down by Hughes. Booty and Bolton are winning. And Baldwin, good save. Well, half time. We definitely, lead. I think we deserve the leader we've got right now, which is great. But elsewhere, you know, Bolton winning, Cambridge losing though, Carlisle drawing against Walsall. So two of the, I mean, there's two matches featuring sides from the big six, which is very helpful for us. I mean, that's the Stan Carlisle could conceivably actually fall out of the top six, considering they were the early pace setters in this division. There's been some shuffling elsewhere. Cambridge have found an equaliser against Wimbledon. Well, if we do go up, I would like Cambridge to come with us because they are the closest sort of league team to me in real life. Duhaney, back for O'Reilly. Oh, and it's nearly flicked in. Mopped up by Dara O'Shea. Having a couple of even stronger players back in the team today has really helped. Too easy's in. He's going to struggle from this angle. Ooh, at least he didn't hit the goalkeeper, I suppose. But while it's 1-0, anything could happen. One thunder strike and they've got level, you know? Their first shot of the game on target will probably go in. Oh, and oh, Conquo's done quite well to tip that wide, actually. But for all our shots and reasonable amount of chances today, it just takes one goal. And this game is level. Lewis Potter. Bravo. I, I mean, I can't say uh, what a goal that is from Finn back. Uh, as I was just saying, it only takes one moment of absolute specialness to level things up. Look how far away he is here. Oh, what a thunder bastard that is. N Newport County won, Notts County won. I can't argue with the goal. It's an unbelievable strike. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to go for Ian Saunders. Give him his debut today. Maybe he'll come up with something magical. Whips it in. And McPhee! Oh, very nearly got an assist on his debut there. I just don't want to push and risk losing this one. A point is better than no points at this point. Booty's ball. Besides, we've still got the quality, I think, to go and maybe create some more chances before the end of this match and go and grab a winner. Hopefully, Booty. McPhee! Yes! Niall McPhee, seventh goal of the season. Lovely little knockdown from Regan Booty. And we're back in front. And I think we've deserved the win. But I wouldn't have been able to begrudge them if they got a point thanks to that goal. This is a nice camera angle. Sam Hughes does well, but Regan Booty does even better to just knock this down for McPhee. Lovely little knockdown. Thunderous effort from Nile McPhee. Keeper can't keep it out. Seven goals for the season for the lad. Considering he hadn't scored until the halfway point, happy with that. And Carlisle have scored against Walsall. That's a... Sub oh, no, they've equalised. <laughs> Almost immediately, in fact. Booty delivers another one. Headed away. And Scunthorpe have got a late equaliser against Plymouth as well. McPhee again. Too easy! Oh, and now... Oh, is he offside? Really? It's getting very, very tight amongst those other sides now. Because I don't think he's offside here. Ball comes to McPhee. Okay, so at the moment, the ball leaves McPhee's foot. He's just simply not offside. Like, that's just, that should be a goal. <laughs> okay, we better not lose this now. Ah, oh, I think Tweezy's been denied a perfectly good goal there. More importantly than that, actually, Noah McPhee's been denied a really nice assist. Ball in. O'Shea heads it clear. And I think that's going to do it. I think they are going to get away with a 2-1 victory here. Hard fought. Brindley. Saunders. 
Ah, oh, I couldn't hold on to the ball long enough, and that should be mopped up. There we go. Newport County 1, Notts County 2. Um, fantastic goal from Finback. Got to be honest about that. Probably should have had a third goal there, but it's great to see Niall McPhee grab another goal and a huge victory away from home with other results going our way elsewhere as well. Beautiful. And that actually puts us in a really top spot. Four points clear with four games to go. And more importantly, oh, actually seven points clear in the end. But we've still gained something there. But that being said, we could easily go on a horrendous run over the next couple of matches uh, and see this all drift away. But I think we're in a really good position right now, which is so pleasing. So, next episode, you know what it is. It's Cambridge, it's Bolton, it's Walsall, and a final against Northampton. It's the next three matches that I think really does decide this season. We could lose all three and find ourselves in real trouble. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, we're actually on a, a run of five consecutive victories and seven in out of eight, which is much more like it, frankly. And hopefully we can keep this up for the rest of the season. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, drop a like, that'd be phenomenal. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Four live comms tomorrow. It's going to be an absolute epic. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>